Hello guys, hope you all are doing great. So today I am back again in front of the camera after a long, long time. So it took me a while to uh, come back to uh, the front of the camera or, you know, in front of the camera. So uh, I am back with a very exciting video. A lot of people are preparing for embedded system jobs. A lot of people keep asking me post job opportunities on embedded system. Please make content on embedded system because a lot of opportunities are actually coming uh, in this field. So we are back with the very latest interview questions of embedded system. It will be very useful. Please, if you are at, if you are at least not uh, going to, you know, attend the interview soon, save it somewhere because it is going to be very useful for you. So let's see the questions one by one. If you are seeing the channel for the first time, let me introduce myself. My name is Anu. I make videos on career guidance, electronics related content, job opportunities, and basically helping people with, uh, you know, uh, electronics related stuff, career related stuff. Uh, that is my job. And this channel is all about that. This channel is all about career guidance and job opportunities and also electronics related content. So if you are interested in watching those kind of videos, you can always consider uh, subscribing to the channel. You can always uh, support the channel by giving thumbs up to the videos that you like. So let's deep dive into the questions on the latest embedded system topics it's like application level questions on embedded systems so it is going to be very interesting so as i said in the beginning of this video these uh, questions are not just basic uh, questions like what is an embedded system what is the functionality these are application level questions that you can actually face in a uh, interview and if you are interested in uh, getting a image of the questions and answers it's always a good thing to follow me on my instagram page there is a group in instagram so i'll be posting these kind of photos or images that is the question and answers basically uh, in that group. Okay, so uh, the Instagram link is also in the description. You can just click on that, follow me there and get the images uh, in your uh, phone or system or whatever. Okay, so let's start with the first question. So the first question is, in your opinion, why, why would someone choose to use an embedded system over the uh, other available options? I'm basically reading the questions and answers or the questions from the laptop that's why i'm looking down okay so why would somebody choose an embedded system over other uh, systems the answer is if you are looking for a, a very specific functionality if you are interested in going for a very specific functionality like atm or for example digital camera you just want to take photos or videos if it is a specific functionality then if you want to want it to be an optimized like a you know compact system and if you want that system to run for longer time with um, you know, more power, more like this less power consumption or it, it uh, optimizes power. And if you are looking to optimize the cost based on the requirement of hardware and software, then that is a scenario in which you will be going for an embedded system. Okay, so embedded systems, we all know that it is a application specific system. It has a specific application. It is used for a specific application. So if you are looking for such kind of an application, for example, a uh, washing machine, it is used for washing clothes. That is the only thing. It doesn't do anything uh, else. Or if it is like an ATM, it's used for taking money from uh, the bank. That is the transaction uh, or taking off money. That is the only thing. So it's like optimized for that. It uh, uses less power or the power, uh, you know, storage uh, is optimized. Hardware and software is optimized for that specific functionality. So if these are the things, if you are looking for this kind of things or this kind of applications, then that is a very good uh, point in which you can go for an embedded system. That should be your answer. The next question is, when might an embedded system require an infinite loop? Okay, so uh, we know that uh, in embedded systems like ATMs, uh, there is a message always being run in an infinite loop unless and until uh, a user comes in and user insert the card then the message changes so there is an infinite loop running to uh, always welcome the user or to display some advertisements those kind of things is there or if you take an example of a uh, of a video game okay uh, a video game uh, or a playstation that can also be called as a embedded system so in that also uh, an infinite running of 
a game is happening unless and until you switch off it unless and until you do anything else the game will uh, will be running in an infinite loop okay so these are some scenarios uh, in which uh, infinite loops that is if some operations need to be repeated for a longer period of time without uh, an interrupt or without uh, actually a monitoring from the operating system then that kind of functionalities we put in an infinite loop that is the things or the steps or the process that we want to run continuously we put in an infinite loop whenever some other specific things happens for example somebody comes in somebody uh, insert the atm card or some other things uh, like some other specific operations is happening until that this loop will run okay so if you want some steps to be run for a longer period of time like for forever if you want that to run then you put it in a infinite loop basically in all programming languages uh, we do this kind of things for example if uh, you know you want some loop to run uh, and it shows options for the user the user should select options from the given set like for one two from one two three four five if there is some prompt uh, asking the user to select an uh, input then it, that also runs in an infinite loop so these kind of things we always put in a whether it is in python whether it is in java c c plus plus everything we use either while loop or some other loops to run continuously as a infinite loop okay so you can you can pick examples uh, from the scenarios that you see uh, in your real life so that will be the answer for uh, when you are using an infinite loop in an embedded system let us move to the next question it is like a uh, question that you can relate in your real life okay now what are the different types of embedded system and with which one uh, do you have most experience so this is the third question you, you can see the questions on the screen okay so what are the different types of embedded systems like uh, you just give some examples of embedded system and what are the ones that you have most experience with so it is asking so the interviewer is basically asking you to uh, pick some examples from your real life scenario you can say uh, washing machine you can say digital camera you can say um, printer very very good example printer is like very uh, common thing in like households or everywhere now or you can say uh, atm it's like it's like inevitable for everybody because we all need money then uh, automatic uh, you know uh, vending machines uh, chocolate vending machine or soda vending machine whatever like the you can see these kind of uh, equipments in like uh, for example railway stations or some like everywhere now you just insert the coin and you get like candy or some food or even magazines now so it's like a very common thing which you interact every day i would suggest you, uh, you say like a washing machine or a digital camera or a printer or an atm these are very like uh, day to day we have interactions with these kind of embedded systems and all these are embedded so if you don't know the examples of embedded system i have listed out a, a list a long list of embedded systems now and there is more of it i think i have made a shorts or a small video on like different types of embedded systems but anyway um if you don't know then this is the answer okay let's move to the next question what are the different levels of testing in embedded system okay so the different levels of testing is basically four levels of testing uh, testing is there unit testing unit testing means it is testing different units like unit by unit it is testing uh, like the parts of a system uh, basically an embedded system integration testing you try to integrate the units together and you test it then system testing you are going to you you get a system when you integrate them and you are going to try the uh, or you are going to test the system uh, next is user acceptance level testing so basically when you are trying to operate it as an actual system like when a user comes when the user interacts with the system how the system is behaving you want to know how the system is behaving then that level of testing is called user acceptance level testing so these are the uh, four levels of testing there can be sub levels but ma mainly these are the four levels 
while all these levels are important, the user acceptance level testing will help us to understand whether it gives a specific functionality which we are actually making it for. As a company, if I'm making an embedded system, I have certain set of, uh, you know, uh, outputs which I'm expecting from the system, certain level of performance, certain level of, you know, uh, certain things that I expect it to do. I have some expectations level when I'm thinking or when I'm deciding the, uh, when I'm designing the prototype. So if it is behaving in that way, based on my uh, expectation, it's actually understood in the user acceptance level testing. Okay, so that is the uh, question and you can answer it in this way. Now let's talk about the uh, ISR or interrupt service routine. The question is this, do you know what ISR stands within the context of a context of an embedded system? What does it do? So ISR, if you don't know, it is interrupt service routine. Uh, that is, uh, for example, uh, if you are, uh, uh, say, if you are trying to take money from the ATM, okay, and suddenly you understood, okay, I need some more money, like the money that I've entered is not sufficient. I need to stop the transaction in between when, while I am doing something like some calculations or I, when I split the money into like how much uh, notes I want, whether I want 100 rupee notes or whether I want, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, it's basically doing the transaction and while I am uh, deciding, okay, I need more money. So I need to interrupt. I need to uh, stop the transaction. I want to start it again. So in that case, you just press the red button or you just uh, push the reset button. That is actually acting as a ISR or interrupt service routine. And what it does is, so earlier the operating system was uh, processing a set of instruction to do the money transaction but suddenly you press the button you press the reset button then it understood okay i need to stop this so the normal flow of executions is stopped in between so uh, this process is called interrupt interrupting basically when somebody is talking if you are talking in middle that is called interrupt we say that okay don't interrupt or normally we say right so this is also the same meaning when it comes to these kind of operating systems or when it comes to embedded system when the uh, when the processor or when the operating system is doing or processing set of instructions while you ask it to do something else or you need a uh, you need to stop it or you need, you need to uh, do something else in between that then you uh, go for a interrupt then you rise and interrupt by either pressing some buttons uh, and that is called a interrupt and this process or this uh, whatever you are you know want whatever you want to do now that is called interrupt service routine so when an interrupt comes what happens is operating system will stop whatever it is doing uh, right now and it will try to process the interrupt because interrupts have like more priority based on like uh, levels of priorities uh, actually it's like a deep topic uh, every interrupt has set set priority uh, and it is a design time uh, decision like which interrupt should be given highest priority which interrupt should be given lowest priority so you already write those things in the code so when an interrupt of this uh, you know behavior comes the operating system will stop whatever it is doing and it is going to process the interrupt so that is an example of interrupt service routine and it is basically uh, you know asking an assistance when operating system is doing something else in a very normal language, we can say like that. Okay, let us move to a basic question. I am 100% sure you are all aware of this. Define the components of an embedded system. So there are a lot of components. If you go into the you know basic things, there are uh, different components um, for an embedded system and based on the requirements of the application for which you are designing it, it also varies. Now, an embedded system consists of primarily three components. Hardware is required, software is required, and operating system is required. Hardware is always application specific. As I said, all embedded systems are application specific. Like it is designed for a um, set of, uh, or not a set of, for a specific application. It just want, uh, that is when the user, when somebody is designing it, the person want it to do only something, not everything. Okay, so hardware is also selected in that way. No, application specific hardware is selected. If it requires a switch, 
it is included if it requires some other things for example a uh, uh, a part to give the coins or take the money then that is included or if it wants some ios or input outputs or if it wants some timers or if it want a display only then that is included otherwise it is not included for general purpose that is the first part which is hardwares or hardware then software software is also very specifically designed for a for that application it's not a general purpose software it is a application specific software third part is real time operating system or rtos so uh, we have actually made a set of videos on the real time operating systems i have actually made interview questions on that too all of this is in the channel a lot of people are actually not aware of our videos uh, i don't know why but uh, okay if you are somebody who is new to this channel please try to share the videos with the friends or family or colleagues or whatever okay so the the third component is operating system operating system we are using here is real time operating system so this kind of operating systems uh, which is real time uh, they are called uh, why they are called real time is because they give a lot of importance to time deadline uh, every task should be finished within a given time the time is very important that kind of operating system which gives importance to deadlines time that is called real time operating system uh okay so these are the components of an embedded system so we have seen some basic questions uh, not basic questions sorry we have seen some application level questions but i have not included too much because um, i'm going to continue the series so uh, please uh, travel with me if you are interested in preparing for core companies if you are looking for uh, enhancing your knowledge if you are in, interested in embedded systems in general please continue with me i am going to uh, do different varieties of areas not just embedded system but i am going to include vlsi questions i am going to include uh, application level rtos questions and what not so electronics is a very interesting subject so we are here to make it easy so join with me if you are interested and as i said support the channel subscribe to it and very soon we are going to start a python course uh, so the announcement is going to come tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow a lot of companies are is asking for python requirement python knowledge experience and everything so i'm going to help you with like the basic python understanding through a small course in our channel if you are interested in that wait for it that's it thanks for watching keep on watching Bye.